Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about SVOL. SVOL pays a dividend of 17%, so it's a very high dividend ETF. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at how it does that and how it generates such a yield. So something to consider is that it's actually taxed as ordinary income and not as a dividend. And the reason for that is because the dividends that they distribute is not made through qualified dividends. However, it's made through derivative trading. So that's already something to consider. So if you are getting a uh, yield from SVOL already, uh, consider that you are paying ordinary income tax on it. So let's get into the video and let's see how SVOL actually uh, trades and how it actually makes that sort of a yield to distribute to its investors. SVOL's trading strategy is that only 25% of the holdings are in short fixed futures. This is also because you don't want to expose your investors to too much risk. So that's why only 25% is in short fixed futures. No more than 1% is in fixed call options. So this will be used as a hedge. And the reason why they are hedging their portfolio is because you never know what could happen with the fix, right? During COVID, for example, you had a massive spike in the fix. And if you don't have any uh, hedging on your short positions, then you could have just been wiped out, right? So then the remaining 75% will be used uh, to invest in treasuries. Now, most derivative trading ETFs use treasuries for collateral. This is what the trading strategy of SVOL is. If the fix goes up 10%, SVOL should go down 2.5% and also vice versa. If the fix were to go down 10%, SVOL should go up 2.5%. Because it's an actively managed ETF, the expense ratio will be much higher, of course, right? So the expense ratio of SVOL is 0.66%. So it really isn't that high compared to how much you're receiving in dividends or in distribution, right? So that is, to me, something that's very important. When I look for ETFs to buy, I always want the expense ratio to be lower than the dividend yield, right? Because you want to receive more, you want cash inflow and not cash outflow. So SOL does do that. They do pay out a higher dividend. The way I would trade SOL is I would wait for the fix to spike over $40. The reason for this is because the VIX rarely stays above 40 for a long period of time. So looking at the graph of the VIX, we see that they have an initial spike that goes to 35 or above, and then it slowly goes down the coming weeks. So getting into SVOL when the VIX is above 40 is a very easy way to predict that the share price will go up. So we would get capital gains through the appreciation of the price, but we will also get a good yield from SVOL derivative trading, right? So that's how I would trade SVOL. I would wait for the fix to be above $40. So let me know in the comments what you think of SVOL and let me know what ETF I should do next. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.